I didn't even need to finish the tutorial mission to be baffled by the incompetence. I was immediately bombarded with bad jokes and the despair of knowing that this is what became of the developers who made the Arkham series. The opening is one of those you're probably wondering how I got into this situation things. This is taking place near the end of the game, and the characters are still unlikable and nasty, spelling out for you that these jerks will not grow as people. You are stuck with this. Could be worse. I could be like Boomer. I uh, had to fight off half a Brainiac's army. Yeah, all on my own. Yeah, me! This is hell. I've died, and this is what my hell looks like. What better way to start things off with abandon all hope, ye who enter here. I made disgusted faces as I was introduced to the game's combat and traversal mechanics. When I'm slogging my way from point A to point B, this game has the nerve to place limits on my jetpack and swinging uses, not letting me move nearly as fast as I could in Batman Arkham Knight. And I cannot be told that it's unfair to compare the two, because Rocksteady put endless reminders that they made the Arkham games into this game's marketing. Trying to figure this out as they go. The Arkham games weren't gritty because Rocksteady makes gritty, dark games. They were that way because that's what suits a Batman story. Every game we approach, we approach that with a similar mindset. They put something along the lines of, from the creators of the Arkham games into this game's description, as if to describe that this game is supposed to have comparable quality. They can't do that and then expect people not to hold them to the same standards. So not as good as Arkham Knight is a valid criticism. And the combat in Kill the Justice League is not any better than the traversal. I think. This gameplay loop is so draining that it makes me not only regret buying this game, but makes me rethink the very concept of buying any game at release price, as you watch your screen get filled with chaotic nonsense, knowing that the only reason you're able to shoot the distant dots this game calls enemies while you're exactly 93% mentally shut down is because the aim assist is so aggressive it could out because I said so yo mama and knowing that you spent $70 on this you start asking yourself questions like are video games worth it? Do I enjoy anything? Was humanity a mistake? But the most upsetting aspect of Kill the Justice League is the script. The last time I tore apart a game's script in this fashion was Spider-Man 2. Instead of turning the exploding bike off in this populated area, Peter just continues the test run, hoping he can get to the end before... But Peter is not the only Spider-Man who does something stupid which the game wants you to think is smart, which makes you think the game is stupid. Oh no! Miles also pulls a face palm move and expects you to be proud of him for it. So you might be wondering, is Kill the Justice League worse than Spider-Man 2? And the answer is clear without need for hesitation. This game is so much worse than Spider-Man 2. The script for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Ah, stupid asshole train! Stupid brain bombs! Stupid deal! Guess Miss Off the Books got something to tell us. Or she made us a mixtape. Makes the script for Spider-Man 2. 
This should be over soon, if you'll just bear with me! Sound like the scripts for Stargirl. Wanted to come by and tell you... Tell you that Cameron is such a nice young man. He sure is. Good kid. Well, your daughter I is... think she's very special, too. <laughs> special how? I was not happy about Miles taking the mantle of Spider-Man from Peter. But at least they didn't kill him and urinate on his corpse. As honorable warriors, we will show proper respect to this fallen hero. By the way Suicide Squad killed the Justice League forces these deplorable dirtbags on us while butchering the characters that are usually beloved is insulting. They know you would rather play as the characters you're being forced to butcher and disrespect. They know they're ruining moments with worthless jokes. Loyalty to your team. We're having a frickin' moment, you dummy! Tell the writers that. Before I describe the characters, it's important for you to understand that they do not all grow as characters in any meaningful way, apart from just randomly not hating each other later on. So their personalities are not set up for character development. Their personalities are what the game expects you to take. Meet the Suicide Squad, Deadshot, an assassin who fails to see that his incarceration was his own fault, instead choosing to bitterly hate and blame everyone else with no self-awareness while expecting you to feel sorry for him because he doesn't like tight spaces. Harley Quinn, an obnoxious sexual assaulter with delusions of being funny. Captain Boomerang, a sniveling little maggot who makes Harley look tolerable by comparison, happy to throw innocent people into the meat grinder for personal gain while demanding praise he knows he doesn't deserve. King Shark, the closest thing to acceptable, and even he's an unfunny bigot who devalues human life. No, all surface dwellers are duplicitous. After the opening tells you what kind of mess you're in, the game goes back seven days and they address Deadshot's race change by telling you to shut up about it. Isn't Deadshot supposed to be white? Aren't you supposed to be shutting your damn mouth? They get bombs put in their heads and told that their heads will blow up if anyone disobeys Amanda Waller's orders. That makes me very motivated to disobey her orders. They're sent into Metropolis, popping up in the Hall of Justice. Holograms of the characters you would much rather be playing as, well, characters you would rather play as, and a version of Wonder Woman who didn't get the dress code, greet you only for the squad to say things like, you know, being a hero is dumb. They dedicated their lives to helping people, and I don't like that. Ugh. Typical hero crap. Big ass gold palace to show the world how super they are. More like bloody hall of hall of hall of bullshit. They even go so far as to say the Justice League doesn't help people like them. Justice for people like them. Not a lot of justice for people like us. Which is not true in the slightest. DC heroes have a long history of saving lives, even if those lives happen to be criminals. In fact, a sizable part of Batman Arkham City was about stopping the genocide of the prison population. And frankly, these dirtbags should be grateful that the heroes didn't kill them in battle. You'll never guess what they find in this public museum that kids would regularly visit. They find gadgets that had been used by heroes and villains. I repeat, the Justice League put easily stealable supervillain tech behind thin glass in a public museum attended by children. Truly, the idiocy knows no bounds! They should have just had Amanda give them the equipment before they went in. She has connections, it's not much of a stretch for her to get her hands on this equipment. They quickly find out that the Justice League has been brainwashed by Brainiac, except for the Flash, who will be brainwashed later, and Wonder Woman, who will never be brainwashed. You didn't expect them to treat the women the same way they've been treating the men, did you? And how did Brainiac defeat the Justice League? I don't know. 
This game hammers it in that the squad needs specially crafted gear just to be in the same room with one Justice League member without melting. So how Brainiac, who can't even beat the Suicide Squad, managed to subjugate the Justice League is beyond me. This is gibberish that the game glosses over so it can hurt us with the bad characters. And the idea of the Suicide Squad taking down the Justice League and Brainiac is made even harder to believe by moments when the brainwashed Justice League members had an easy opportunity to kill all members of the Suicide Squad. Like when Flash rips out someone's heart in a split second and then proceeds to not do the same thing to the Suicide Squad members. Or when Batman knocks down every member of the Suicide Squad and then just doesn't kill them because reasons. When they announced this game, with the subtitle, Kill the Justice League, I thought surely they would back out of, or undo, the act of killing the Justice League. I thought, there's no way they're stupid enough to- Game, sit down. Listen, I'm guessing that you saw some animated DC film or read a comic book where the Justice League heroes die, and you thought to yourself, I want to be cool and edgy like the big kids too. But those stories were set in disposable timelines. Those stories were not destroying the same versions of a hero we've been loving for years. And many of those timelines didn't need to stick around long enough for the loss to be felt. You can't do this to the Batman from the Arkham games. And you can't expect me to stick around in a DC universe that no longer has Superman. Did you think I would anticipate your next game for the sake of seeing your F-list characters like Gizmo and Hack? Let's talk about Brainiac's motivation. When I heard the Flash say he was trying to save the world with Brainiac, I thought maybe Brainiac was going to have a motivation that was interesting. Maybe something with some moral ambiguity that makes you wonder whose side you would really take. But then they revealed that Brainiac wants to kill all humans by terraforming the Earth to look like his home world. It was stupid when Zod did it in Man of Steel and it's stupid here. At first, I thought there was no argument to be made for his motivation, but after suffering the squad and losing the League, I WANT Brainiac to destroy the Arkham world. I say this as someone who has played all four Arkham games countless times. I WANT Brainiac to destroy the population of the Arkham universe so that Rocksteady can't make any more games with them. These people deserve death. Brainiac is the real hero of this game. That being said, if this was a game where you play as the Justice League, who survived the whole game, I would think that Brainiac is a pathetic excuse for a main villain, with no depth, no personality, and not enough screen time to make an impact. But this is not a game where you play as an undying Justice League, so Brainiac is the hero we need. Looter shooters are known to be a gross cesspool of microtransaction filth. They said before the game released that microtransactions would just be for the cosmetics, which is accidentally a great way to ensure that no one will ever pay money for these microtransactions because these cosmetics are pathetic. No one looks good. Some of the alternate costumes are just variations. Captain Boomerang is an eyesore no matter what you put him in. And Harley Quinn didn't get the dress code. I used the classic Harley costume because it's the only one halfway to decent. Don't worry, I did not pay extra for it. This was a pre-order bonus. And not only does Harley not get the dress code, she spits on the dress code. Yeah, right. You just hurt a lot of cosplayers' feelings. For some reason, someone working on this game thought that the costumes that women have loved to dress up in for years are objectifying. And we can't have Harley Quinn involved in objectification, can we? Man, I can't really makes me want to, you know? 
<laughs> no! Harley, no! no. Worth it. And do you remember Poison Ivy from the Arkham games? A character whose main appeal is how attractive she is? She came back as a child. I know all about plant toxins. <laughs> we know. That's why they call you Poison Ivy. It's just Ivy, weirdo. I don't know whether to call that censorship or pedophilia. Wasn't expecting you to come in fun size. Harley and Ivy forever. Intense story burning letters. Don't you like kids? Oh, I just want to smush those little green cheeks. And not any little girl, my little girl. But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. Pedophilia. This is pedophilia. I had heard about Captain Boomerang putting a bomb into a child's head to enslave her. I put the bloody bomb in her head ages ago! What? What? What I did not hear was that this particular child deserved it. Okay, time to die. I'm tired of being around humans. What people should hate Captain Boomerang for is putting a bomb into Toy Man's head, when that boy's only crime was volunteering to help. Pow! <laughs> Pay back, you little shit. Whoa. And no one gives him flack for doing it to Toy Man. You didn't expect them to stick up for a little boy the same way they stuck up for a little girl, did you? They figure out how to kill the Justice League members, while Wonder Woman tries to find a way to stop them non-fatally. King Shark even tells her, you shouldn't be trying to not kill your good friends. It should be in a sword, not a shield. Your friends are beyond saving. How many more lives will be lost while you try and fail? I do not need a lecture on morality from a shark. And just before Wonder Woman dies, she's the one who comes around to their way of thinking, not the other way around. It should have killed him. And the moral of the story is you should kill the innocent victims. Mamma mia, this is horrible. This game sides with criminals who vindictively take revenge on heroes just for doing the right thing. This game has you enslave and defile the innocent, portraying it as fun as long as it happens to a man. This game isn't just bad. This game is evil. The people who made this game are evil. Well, not all of them. Just the ones who made the big decisions. I couldn't force myself to finish this game. After the boss fight with the generic smoke monster, I mean, Batman, one of the game's NPCs told me to just go do other stuff until he decides it's time for me to progress the story. See if you can improve your arms and armor. This NPC wants to dictate to me when I progress the story? No. I decide that I will never progress the story. I've hated every minute of this game, and I would rather die than kill Superman. I love this world. My friends. And yes, even Batman. I deleted the game and did what I should have done in the first place, instead of playing this game at all. I watched a compilation of the cutscenes and there is no part where we find out the real Justice League is still alive, or have someone wake up and call this all a bad dream, or anything that would even begin to salvage this situation. They just kill the real heroes of the story, and tell you that there's 12 other Brainiacs in the multiverse that they expect you to fight in later updates. You know, if I wasn't rooting for Brainiac, I would say that it's moronic to present us with such a hollow villain, so empty his boss fight is a copy of a previous boss fight, and then try to sell the idea of fighting 12 more copies of that hollow villain. In my video about Spider-Man 2, I gave some advice on how to do better. Really, I knew that the developers wouldn't follow my advice. It was more advice for aspiring writers out there. With Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, 
The best way to give advice is to say everything in this game is an example of what not to do. That and stop killing our heroes. Unlike Spider-Man 2, the gameplay is almost as bad as the story. It's not like I would want another game like this with slight changes made. So what's the point of giving advice on how to do something similar in a better fashion? Do yourself a favor and don't make the same mistake I made. Do not buy Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. There are better games for you to play, and if you need recommendations, I've got you. For this list, I'm aiming for lesser known, underrated, or forgotten games that you might not have played before. If you're an Arkham fan who wants more melee combat, I think you'll like Midnight Fight Express. It takes some inspiration from the Arkham games combat, but it's a more lethal version of it. A game that I played a long time ago that was somewhat similar to the Arkham games combat was Stories, The Path of Destinies. It's set in this kind of cartoony, anthropomorphic world, and you keep making different decisions that lead to different paths, and then something goes wrong, so you're sent back to the beginning, and you might know something that you didn't know before that leads to more paths opening up for you. Evil West is a pretty good action game. It's not very much like Arkham. It's more like the more recent God of War games. I thought it was a ton of fun. Solstice is another really good underrated action game. This one's more akin to Devil May Cry and Bayonetta. Unlike Evil West, I would recommend it for more than just the combat and the visuals. The story of Evil West is kind of lacking, honestly, but the story of Solstice is a lot better, in my opinion. If you're looking for a game that has better shooting than Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, here are some shooter recommendations. Call of War as Gunslinger is a shooter set in the Old West. It's kind of historically accurate, but you kind of need to suspend disbelief. It's like exaggerated historically accurate, if that makes sense. I know there's two Western games on this list, technically, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Westerns, but I can make exceptions here and there. It's, it's like there's some elements of Westerns that I don't like, but they're ignored in some video games, if that makes sense. A game that bombed really hard was Immortals of Avium where you use magic instead of guns. People wrote it off because of the dialogue, which, yeah, it can get pretty bad at times. It gets not as bad later on, in my opinion. The story starts out really bad, and then it gets better with a few hiccups here and there, but the gameplay is good pretty much the whole way through. If you've already made the mistake of playing Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League like I did, you might be looking for something happier to get you out of that pit of despair. Bayonetta Origins is such a delightful game. Obviously it's a prequel to Bayonetta, but it's mm, it's fun in a different way. The illustration-inspired visual style is so appealing, and the way it's written is so cute. Wally the video game is not as bad as it could have been. There's a few moments of hilarity here and there, really recaptures the Wally personality really well. <laughs> Speaking of games based off of Pixar movies, Brave the video game is surprisingly a lot of fun. It's a twin stick shooter that has some liberties with the lore. There's a part of the game where the witch is explaining the situation and I thought, what? why is the lore not that cool in the movie? One more game that's just very delightful is Child of Light. The hand-drawn visuals are a treat. The dialogue is written in rhyme. I usually don't play that many turn-based RPGs, but this one grabbed me. If you play those games instead of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, then we'll defeat Kill the Justice League the same way we defeated the Avengers game. So remember to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, and not make the same mistake I did.